Welcome to the topic where we discuss gender influences on pain. When you strictly look at the term gender, it means uh, male on the one extreme, females on the other extreme, with anything in the middle being variable. It makes more sense to use the term sex influences on pain, so we'll use just the two extremes, males and females, and how they differ, or how they influence pain. So this is the way we're going to structure the talk. We're going to define gender and sex, talk a bit about a couple of landmark uh, publications, or particularly one, have a brief look at research into this field, and then talk about the biopsychosocial differences between males and females and how they experience pain. So the physiological differences, the psychological differences, and the social differences. So gender compared to the word or term sex. So gender, as I've mentioned, is it's modifiable and it's essentially your, the, the socio-culture, uh, your behavior from within the socio-cultural point of view. So this is your self-representation um, and this is the way you express yourself. So gender is based in, in, in society. It's a socially based term and there's a range. There's males on the one side and females on the other side. So it's highly variable gender. And that's why some of these papers or some of the references that you've got make ter uh, use the term gender. But I, c I probably prefer to use the term sex. When you look at sex, it's purely the phenotypical um, differences between two people or between um, individuals. And this is based in your chromosomes. So you're either male or you're female according to your chromosomes. And I know that that's not always the case, but we'll keep it simple for the, for the purposes of this discussion. So let's move on to a publication that came out in 1997 by Berkeley, appropriately termed sex differences in pain, um, more so than gender differences in pain. The paper stated that females had lower pain thresholds, females had greater ability to discriminate pain, Females had higher pain uh, ratings, and they had less tolerance to painful stimuli. And they get more pain in more parts of the body. And they proposed, uh, or Berkeley proposed, three um, reasons for this. One was the vaginal canal being a route for trauma invasion by pathogens and setting up hyperalgesia. Also being differences in the temporal patterns of pain through the menstrual cycle. Um, and this may change how uh, females learn pain and interpret painful stimuli. And again, through the cycle, the sex hormones having their various differences comparing males and females to uh, neuroactive agents, opioid, non-opioid systems, nerve growth factors, and uh, the sympathetic system. So if somebody asks you what the differences are between females and males with regards to pain, Females have less pain tolerances, they have higher pain intensity, so they feel pain at a greater intensity compared to males. They've, great, they've got greater sensory discrimination. They've got a quick, quicker withdrawal reflex, greater um, pupil dilation. They, they uh, have more temporal summation, so greater temporal summation. They've got less diffuse noxious inhibitory control, which we've discussed elsewhere. That's where pain in one part of the body reduces pain in another part of the body and that you'll find in one of the one of the earlier handouts um, females get greater disability from pain so they're more disabled from pain and of course psychosocially they've got greater pain related fears and depression and less self-efficacy so let's look at some research some some um, new research and this was published in 2007 in the journal Pain and this was from the IASP uh, special interest group on gender, sex and pain um, and what they found was they had a look at the previous 10 years worth of papers coming out of the journal Pain and they found that 79 percent of the papers were, were used um, male subjects as opposed to 8 percent of the papers that used female only subjects so still a huge discrepancy. Um, and that paper was a call to really spread out the, the um, research looking at males and females because it gives us a greater ability to, um, to understand individual pain. One of the reasons why they said was that the, um, there's a propensity to study males only was 
probably because of the various hormones and, their, and how they um, interfere with research. The other thing they said was it was probably inertia as well. So we need to change, we need to study males, and we need to study females. But let's look at, look at um, various types of pain that females get compared to males. And females, the only kinds of pains that females uh, uh, experience are pains from endometriosis, labor pains, pains from um, a, a painful um, menstrual cycle, so dysmenorrhea, um, pelvic pain, vulvodynia, and postmastectomy pain. Females also more frequently feel, um, or more frequently suffer from fibromyalgia, so generally a female, a female condition, migraines, temporomandibular joint pains, and irritable bowel syndrome. That's not to say they don't occur in males, but they're certainly more frequent in females. And here's the list of male-only pains, prostodynia, prostatitis, and males can get pelvic pain as well, but it's a different kind of pain. And... Um, some say related to the, the prostate itself. So females get more kinds of pain, more painful syndromes occur in females as well. So the physiological differences, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but if you talk about drugs and drug handling, you could say that drug handling is different in females because of bioavailability of various things, um, abnormalities or differences in distribution, metabolism and excretion. So let's briefly look at each one of those pick up any newspaper and wait, wait a couple of months and you're bound to see an article um, about females getting um, more drunk, more addicted, and this is just a selection of recent articles that I've found. And it, and it has science behind it. F females are smaller, they've got higher body, a uh, higher content of body fat, they've got less alcohol hydrogenase, so they are affected differently uh, and to, to some say greater degrees um, by alcohol and drugs. The distribution of drugs is different as well. The volume of distribution is different comparing females to males. Protein binding is different. Albumin concentrations are different as well. Metabolism and excretion are different. Um, the CYP3A um, uh, isoenzyme, I think it's higher in females, and that means that they metabolize drugs that are dependent on this more quickly, such as midazolam. Renal clearance may have a bearing on um, drug uh, drug clearances as well, or drug excretion. So this is drug. This is having a look at um, just a selection of drugs that have um, that are influenced by hormones, and the big one there is opioids. As you can see, um, females have a greater opioid requirement. They get more side effects from opioids, and that's really important because you see a patient for 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 a surgery or give an anaesthetic or treat, treat post-operative pain in a, in, a, in a female and they all really in your mind get the same kind of doses that males do and, and we shouldn't be doing that. Perhaps we should be giving females um, greater opioids, perhaps we should be giving them different opioids as well. It might be that the newer synthetic opioids such as oxycodone um, have different effects on females compared to males. So we really need to think about this and this comes back to individualized medicine depending on genetics and um, we should really be thinking about this and not treating everyone the same but treating everyone individually dependent on their characteristics. So let's look at the, the, um, the cycle of hormone changes within females and I'm, I've just um, labeled estrogen in black so that's the estrogen and um, there's the progesterone level and that's midway through the cycle progesterone increases um, sorry, I beg your pardon. Yeah, that's right. That's midway. That's 14 days through the cycle. So essentially what happens is that menstruation uh, pain occurs when females have painful conditions. When the estrogen levels drop off through the cycle, pain and pain problems uh, uh, become worse. And these can be treated with um, the contraceptive pill. And this is one of the treatments for dysmenorrhea um, is um, the contraceptive pill. Now, pregnancy itself is, a, is, an anal, is an analgesic state, so this is a progesterone really dominant state. So progesterone is good. Estrogen, when it drops off, is, a, is um, propane. Pro, um. So 
Let's just have a look at some differences between hormones, and I'm sure you're not expected to know these differences, but it's just to give you an idea, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, so females versus males, call it, call it if you like. Um, progesterone is anxiolytic, it's sedative, it's analgesic, it's anticonvulsant, it's good in a number of ways. It's also neuroprotective, whereas testosterone as well is analgesic, it modulates opioids, endogenous opioids, and it increases levels of noradrenaline, so testosterone is good too, whereas estrogen have a number of um, detrimental changes, so it increases glutamate glutamergic glutam yeah, it increases the glutamate system um, and it causes some dorsal horn changes as well so so estrogen is not good when compared to progesterone and testosterone physiological differences let's just stick with one paper that I found really interesting and I'm going to spend just a few minutes telling you about this paper and as you can see our logo in the corner has changed and that's the transgender uh, flag You've got blue for males, uh, pink for females, and white for n neutral uh, um, sexes. So those without a sex or trans or in the phase of changing from male to female or female to male. So this was a paper done in 2007, really interesting paper looking at cross-sex hormone administration changes in transsexual um, women and men. So those that undergo gender reassignment surgery as well as hormonal changes to influence that change. So let's look at males. So males to females, so when males are converted to females, they are given estrogens and anti-androgens. When females become males, they are given androgens. So this paper looked at a group of people um, undergoing transgender or gender reassignment um, uh, surgery with hormonal uh, replacement as well. So 25% of the males to females, so males became females, developed painful conditions. That was headaches, uh, headache pains, breast pains and musculoskeletal pain. So when you became female from this paper, 25% of them went on to develop painful conditions. Now when the females became males and they got, um, uh, so 54% of females when they became males, their pain improved after testosterone administration. So when you became males, you got less pain. And that's a really interesting paper. It's not a, not a you know, fantastically scientific paper. There were a couple of flaws in the paper, but it does pose some interesting questions and it gives you some insight into what's going on. Now, there are psychological differences between males and females. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. There are differences with gen uh, depression, anxiety, differences in the fact that females express themselves um, differently to males. Of course, there are differences in learned behaviors. Coping skills and attitudes are different as well. And, if, and there are socio-cultural differences as well, looking at childbirth, looking at the way females and males used to historically work. Females generally have sedentary jobs. Males are the laborers. They're out there building things or breaking things down. Now, the socio-cultural and um, psychological differences, I'd be really interested to see how they will change their influence on pain perception as time is changing and females and males have different um, stations within um, society. So as our stations change in society, as females become more equal to males in a number of in a number of respects, where, it, where whereas this wasn't the case in years gone by, um, it would be really interesting to see how this changes the the perception of pain. So when you're talking about gender differences or female uh, sex differences in pain, they've got biological differences, you've got so psychological differences, and you've got social differences. And that concludes this topic.